All right, our next plant today is Nyssa sylvatica. So this is uh, Tupelo or black gum, or um, uh, excuse me, what are my common names here? Uh, sour gum, black gum, black tupelo, okay? So uh, variable and common name, and honestly, variable is the name of the game for Nyssa sylvatica. Pat Breen, uh, developer of our landscape plant site and, and my predecessor, he liked to say of Nyssa sylvatica, if you come across a, uh, a broadleaf deciduous tree in the landscape in a temperate zone and it has variable leaves and you can't identify it, it's Nyssa, right? So the leaves of Nyssa, they are alternately arranged, but they're going to be quite variable in shape. They're going to be variable in the amount of glossiness that you see uh, during the season. They're going to be variable in their uh, fall color. Additionally, many, like, and the reason why we're, we're framing this shot as we are, is that there's lots of variability in these seedlings behind me, and they are, uh, in fact, seedlings, and that's many of our, our black gum that you see in the landscape are seedlings. Although there are some cultivars that have been uh, introduced uh, recently, a couple are fire starter and afterburner, and as those names suggest, they have really outstanding, really um, uh, shocking red fall color. So they are a uh, dioecia species. A number of these plants, in addition to variability in plant shape and height and habit, uh, they are, uh, they're, they're both males and females in here. And traditionally, we, we again, sort of like our ginkgos, we want to be planting males uh, for less litter, less um, you know, dropping of fruit on cars, birds dropping them on sidewalks and cars, etc. So again, if you see a variable broadleaf uh, uh, tree in the temperate zone, having trouble identifying it, it may be uh, Nissa. Great tree uh, and, and, and is definitely becoming more popular, uh, good for a wet site. Uh, so that is uh, Nissa sylvatica.